56, 1, 6 through 8. Maintain justice and do what is right, for my salvation is close at hand, and my righteousness will soon be revealed. And foreigners who bind themselves to the Lord, to minister to him, to love the name of the Lord, and to be his servants, all who keep the Sabbath without desecrating it, and who hold fast to my covenant. These I will bring to my holy mountain and give them joy in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and sacrifices will be accepted on my altar, for my house will be called a house of prayer for all nations. The sovereign Lord declares, he who gathers the exiles of Israel, I will gather still others to them besides those already gathered. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for bringing us here in your presence this morning. And for those that's watching either, uh, via Facebook or Zoom, Lord, we uh, know you are here with us but we invite you into our hearts this morning to speak to us through pastor's message, through the worship. And Lord, we uh, lift up the niece family. Lord, we just think of them. And Lord, we uh, just ask that you be with all the other prayer requests uh, that people have. And Lord, we uh, just pray that you would speak to us in this place today. In your name, amen. For the sin 
Let's bow our heads and as we go to the creator God of all things, the God of miracles, I want you to be just putting your heart and, and spirit in tune with him this morning. At the end of the service this morning, we're going to have an opportunity to do an anointing for prayer. And those on Zoom are going to be joining with us as well. And, and I appreciate Kevin Sandell helping me there. And we'll be communicating with them in just a few minutes in the service. But just think for a moment, what is it that the Lord can do for you today? What is it you're trusting him for today? Father, as we learned last week in the prayer you taught your disciples, Lord, we first come to you and say to you, O Lord God, who is holy, who was, who is, and who forever will be, the God of love, the God of mercy, the God of grace, we come before you praising your name and acknowledging who you are. Lord Jesus, as we come, we come knowing that the world is heavily burdened, Father, with this virus. And again, we ask this, Lord Jesus, we don't ask doubting. We just know that it seems that week in, week out, there's more in different areas of the world that are being tested positive and others who are in the hospital and others, Lord, who are passing away from this virus. And so, Father, we ask, Lord Jesus, that you would do what only you can do. You would eradicate this virus, Lord, from the face of this earth. And Lord, give us courage to face these days unafraid. Fear is not going to do anything for us, Lord God. They don't, it doesn't add anything to our life, and it robs us of so, of so many things. And so, Father, may we do the right things. May we take the right precautions. But, Lord, may we be filled with courage to live, to glorify you, to be strong for each other and our family, to reach out to those that we care about who are shut in, via the phone or whatever it is we can do to make sure we stay in contact with each other. Father, the body of Christ, the church, has not been closed since March 15th. No, we have been open. The body has been open at work. And so, Father, may we be lights, sirens and symbols of your mercy and grace out in the world, Father. Lord, I'm thankful, as I heard from Pam Day, our missionary there in, in the Philippines, Father, that she won't have to have a third procedure on her eye. Lord, we rejoice over that. We pray that you would continue to heal her retina, Father. Lord Jesus, there's other prayer requests. There's Rodney Neese and his family, Father, who have faced death in their family now for the last couple of months. It's been non-stop and his father went to go be with Jesus this week and so father we pray as Rodney travels Lord that he would be uh, an example of your grace to his family as they go through those last moments together and be with the be with the rest of his family fathers brothers sisters and, and all in a way, Father, that's so real. We know that you're with us always, and so me asking be with them, Father, it's kind of silly. You're with them already, but Father, reveal yourself in a way that is so evident. Lord Jesus, um, if there be someone today who needs a special touch, who needs a revelation of your Holy Spirit and presence, Father, reveal yourself today to them. And in this service, Father, as we take a time at the end of the service to do an anointing and a praying for others, Lord, may our faith rise to you and join with your power. And Jesus, we thank you. We glorify you. And all of God's people said, amen. Amen. You may be seated. It is great to see each and every one of you out this morning. Um, 
good to have everybody with us on Zoom and in Facebook Live and, and those later who might be watching on our website. Uh, we've got, uh, usually by Monday, our website has, uh, has the service on that. And Facebook, of course, you can go to Woodbridge NAS and always be able to catch the, the live version or the, the, the version that got recorded. Uh, I encourage you, if you, if you are uh, friends or you've liked or follow our, our Facebook page, Woodbridge NAS, um, take, feel free to share that message uh, so it goes on to your news feed and others might see um, and have faith as well in the Lord. Um, our website is woodbridgenaz.com and um, Pastor Luke and uh, a lot of the team of our children's ministries have been putting together Vacation Bible School and uh, you think uh, you're handing that stuff out in person this week, right? I'm going to deliver it to your home for you. So you don't have to come here. I'm going to do it like the Domino's guy, only it won't be as delicious as pizza, but it'll be more substance than pizza. It's a, it's a package of material that has uh, elements of each lesson and uh, some other objects in there for the kids. And uh, later this week, we're going to be sending links to the uh, videos and different things. Um, thanks to, to Scott and Abby and Jenna and Pastor Luke, they've put together a package of videos for the kids. And so they're about 30 minutes each, I think. And so it's an opportunity for you and the kids to sit down and see some of the videos, learn some of the songs, and an opportunity for the, this package that you'll get to have uh, information. So uh, Vacation Bible School is happening uh, no matter what. And so really thankful to the team who put that together. Uh, so that'll be coming to you this week. If you would like that, and we don't actually happen to have you signed up, please send a message uh, to children at woodbridgenaz.com. Children at woodbridgenaz.com. That's Pastor Luke's email address, and you can get, get that out there in Zoom. If you have grandkids, you have kids in the neighborhood you think that want to join in, Send the mes message to children at woodbridgenaz.com, and Pastor Luke will get that out there for you guys. Well, ah, uh, you know, it is great to be with you this morning. Um, it is great to see those. I already went on Facebook, and I've got my phone with me today. I'm going to have to keep this uh, it's silenced, so we're in good shape with that. Did you silence your phones this morning? That'd be great if you'd do that. Um, but a little bit later, um, Kevin Sandell, who's handling the Zoom, is going to be sending prayer requests in that we're going to be uh, doing some anointing for as well. Doing some interesting things, aren't we? But you know what? The Lord Jesus does not exist in one place. Amen? The Spirit of the Lord is present everywhere with us, with them, and an opportunity for us to experience faith and grace together today. We've been in a series of messages on spiritual formation. The goal is that we would be conformed into the image of Christ. That is what the Apostle Paul says was planned from before the beginning of time, is that each of us would be formed into the image of Christ. And when we each go our own way, we kind of distort and pervert that, that image. And so we looked at the idea of spiritual formation as reading the Holy Scriptures for information, for inspiration, and for transformation, we learned the, the concept of Lectio Divina, which is a, a way of reading the Scripture out loud and repeating that several times and reflecting and re allowing the Holy Spirit to reveal and then, and then to respond to what the Holy Spirit is speaking to us. It's not a reading for information. It's a, it's a time to take a few verses and just spend on that. And then last week we began the messages about spiritual formation through prayer. We learned that, that prayer is communication with God. Prayer is communion with God. It's this, it's this opportunity for us to become aligned with him. We, we looked at that last week of how as we spend time in prayer, as we, as we ask, as we seek, and as we knock, these are not moments in time. This is meant to be the process of this union with God that we begin to be aligned with him. We don't go to God to align him with us, although a lot of times we do that. We go to God and we say, God, here's our list. Get to work on it. 
instead of going to the Lord and saying, Lord God, who are you and what do you want? And how can I get in, in line with what you're wanting for us? As we get in line with, with God, we will find that our prayer requests become answered in a lot more positive ways. As we learned last week about the Lord's Prayer, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. This is this idea of saying, we want your kingdom. I want to be a part of your kingdom, God. And prayer is this primary way in which we show our dependence upon God. You see, so many things that we can do, we can say, God, give me so I can do. But prayer is a time, it doesn't have to be on our knees, but it's a time in which we are saying, God, I can't do this. I need you in my life. I need you first and foremost. And so we learned last week that we need to humble ourselves. We don't go to God with our demands, although we can share with him our needs but we go to him and trying to be aligned with him, to seek his face, that we might know his kingdom, that we might surrender to his will in our life. And so as we looked at those things, we talked about this too last week, is that God's not a pill you take. He's not a, he's not a magician's chant. Some people ask, well, you know, if I pray in Jesus' name, do I get what I want? And in and, and Jesus' name is not abacadabra of the magician at the end, you know. God, do this, do this, do this, and in Jesus' name. And then all of a sudden, it just all happens. That's not, see, that's not what prayer is about. We, we make it about that, but, but prayer is, is not just a pill. I told you, I said, I've been, been trying to lose some weight, to, to trying to get my diabetes under control, and, and you know, I could ask God to remove diabetes from me, and I have. But, I, but you know what I'm finding is that God wants me to become healthier, he wants me to eat better. He wants me to, to exercise. He wants me to walk. He wants me to, and you know what happens when I join God in that process? My blood sugar comes down. And, and, and you know what? Praise the Lord, there's medications out there we can take. But what we have to do is change our mind about prayer to be, God, I'm demanding of you. It's like we've expected God to be the little puppet and we're the marionette. And we just say, God, do what we want you to do. We have, to, we have to rethink of who he is, the creator of all things. Yes, he is the healer. Yes, he is the sustainer. But we, we need to get this alignment with God. In the 1600s, there was a monk, Brother Lawrence. He, he became rather well known for a book in which he did not write. It's called Practicing the Presence. And I want to talk to you about that this morning, about practicing the presence of God. Prayer is this idea of recognizing God's presence. We don't have to pray God to be here. He is here. We don't have to pray for God to go and be with someone. He is with them already. But we want to practice this presence. We want to experience his presence. And so as we begin to look at that this morning, let's look at some scriptural truth about that this morning. And, and I, I, as we look at it here on the screen, um, I'm at, we're going we're gonna to read it. We're going to read it out loud. We're going to read it again, and then I'm going to ask Terry to take it away. I want us to do a little Bible memorization this morning. You thought, Pastor, I came here to get a good nap. <laughs> you, now you're going to want me to actually engage? Yes, let's do that. So the first passage I want us to look at is Matthew 28, 20. And be sure of this, I'm with you always even to the end of the age. Why don't you read that with me out loud? And be sure of this. I am with you always, even to the end of the age. One more time. And be sure of this. I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Don't get scared now. Take it away. We all right? We ready? And be sure of this. I am... You know, you start saying that over and over, and you might begin to start getting it in your head. And then you begin to say, you know what? I don't have to ask God to be with me. He is with me, and he'll always be with me. And then we can go boldly to the throne of grace. Hebrews 13, 5. I like this passage as well. Both of these are from the New Living Translation. Hebrews 13, 5. For God has said, I will never fail you, I will never abandon you. Let's say that out loud. 
For God has said, I will never fail you. I will never abandon you. One more time. For God has said, I will never fail you. I will never abandon you. Let's try it again. For God has said, I will never fail you. I will never abandon you. You see, the biblical truth that we find in, in the Scriptures is that we have promises of the character of God. And when we are talking about prayer, it, it, is, it is this communication, but more than that, it's a communion with God. And we need the promises. He will never fail you. He will never abandon you. And then John 15, 4, remain in me as I also remain in you. Let's say that together. Remain in me as I also remain in you. Remain in me. Try it without it. Remain in me. See this relationship that we're talking about? Remain in me, and I'll remain in you. This relationship, this communion that God wants with us. Prayer, we have, we have isolated prayer to the few moments, for some people, for the few moments before we eat. Or it's the, I'm going to pray before I go to bed, and my head hits the pillow, and it's the best sleeping pill you've ever had, right? When you start to pray, and all of a sudden you wake up tomorrow morning, and you're going, I, I fell asleep again praying. And you know what? That's okay to fall asleep praying. But, but, but prayer is not meant to be a location and a position. Here's the, here's the biblical truth. He's always with us. But here are the practical lies that we tend to believe about prayer. We think that we have to bow. We have to kneel down. We have to put our hands in a certain position. We have to close our eyes. None of that is required because God's presence is already with you. All you have to do is turn your thoughts to him. Now, as I've said before, as I talked about the reading of scriptures through Lectio Divina, it is beneficial to speak out the words out of your mouth, but you don't have to. It's the thoughts in your mind. God is present with you. And, and so you don't need to go to some place. You know, I can't wait till I get to church to pray. You, you don't have to. You could be driving down the road. You, your hands are on the wheel. Your eyes are straight forward and paying attention, but your thoughts are with God. It could be in the midst, in, in the midst of an argument or a big struggle you're having. You, maybe you're angry and, you're, you just, and then you just stop and say, God, help me right now. <laughs> God, I need an experience of your presence in a way that will change what's going on right now. This idea of we have to get to a place or a position. You know what also we struggle with? We think we need somebody else to pray with us to get God to do something. Now, maybe you're used to doing this. Maybe you get one or two people at work together, and you go to your boss, and you're trying to convince them, and you think the more people you get, the more you can get the the boss to move on what you're wanting to do. Maybe you do that with a spouse or your children. But I want you to know something. God does not require two or three to be gathered together. But pastor, doesn't the passage in Scripture say when two or three are gathered together, he's in the midst? God is there even if it's just you. Amen? This idea to think that I need to get 5, 10, 50, if I can get everybody praying, what do we think? That we're trying to convince God that he ought to do something for us? God is not that. We saw that last week. God is not that friend at midnight who is just trying to make a good name for himself, and that's why he gets up and, and provides you some bread in the middle of the night. The, the Scripture tells us clearly God is not that way. If you have need, he's going to provide it. He'll provide his Holy Spirit. So, Pastor, why would I get more people to pray with me? Well, it might help you align with God. Instead of, hey, hey, I need you to pray that I get this job this week. Okay, that's fine. But can we pray and seek God's will for what that job ought to be? And if it's the right job? 
And, and, and you see, as we get more people together, what we're doing is not trying to change God's mind about something. What we're doing is we're saying, God, help us increase our faith because we're going to you. We're trusting you first and foremost. This idea, Abraham prayed if there were 100, if there were 50, if there were 20, if there were 10 righteous people in Sodom, Abraham just by himself praying, and then he stopped at 10. I, I think maybe Abraham could have prayed for just one. But God heard him there, and it doesn't matter how many. We've got to stop believing these human effort lies that keep us from approaching the throne of God boldly. God wants to hear us. And so if you're in need, if you have fear, if you're, if you're worried about something, if you're, if you're concerned, if, you, if you're aching, if you've got some issues, go boldly to the throne of grace to receive help in time of need. That's Hebrews 4.12. We can go boldly to the throne of grace. Well, We've seen the biblical truth that God is always with us. He's never going to abandon us. He, he remains with us. And we've seen these lies. Now let's, let's look at this idea of being in God's presence. Biblically, oil is used as a sign of the presence of God. Um, in a few weeks, I'm going to be uh, doing a service in which I'm going to be handing out um, some oil to each and every one who wants it. I'm, I'm, my oil is stuck in my pocket. It won't come out with one hand. Goodness gracious. Um, oil has no power. It is not God. It is not the presence of God. But in Scripture, oil is used over and over from Old Testament all the way into the New Testament to symbolize the presence of of God's Holy Spirit. Exodus 40 verse 9 says, take the anointing oil and anoint the tabernacle and everything in it, consecrate it and all its furnishings, and it will be holy. Well, it's going to be holy because of God's presence, but, but it's the symbolism. Set something apart and then anoint it with oil, and it'll be holy. The symbolism of God's real presence, because he really is present. Next, we see that the anointing oil of God is, is used to appoint a king. We see it in 2 Samuel chapter 2, verse 4. There they anointed David king over the tribe of Judah. So we see this in Scripture, that these are the things that, that they would do to symbolize God's anointing or God's presence. The oil gives us some visible, tangible evidence that God is real. And he is present right now, right here. And he's always with us. He'll never forsake us. He'll never leave us. One of the things oil does is, is it kind of stays for a while if you place it on yourself. And so it's, a, it's this idea that he's always with us. Listen to what John writes in his first letter, chapter 2, verse 27. As for you... The anointing you receive from him remains in you, and you do not need anyone to teach you, but as his anointing teaches you about all things, and as that anointing is real, not counterfeit, just as it has taught you, remain in him. Now, we're in the New Testament, and John is not talking about oil at this moment. He's talking about the presence of God. It is real. It is with you. Do you believe that this morning, church? Do you believe that God's presence is real and he is with us? And, and, and when we begin to believe this, we don't have to yell at him. We don't have to get his attention. Remember the prophets of Baal up on the mount. And they were saying, you know, hey, hey, God, come and, 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 and take care of all of this offering here that we've got. And prophets of Baal were praying to Baal. And <laughs> the prophet of God says, you know, maybe you need to yell louder. Maybe your God is asleep. <laughs> maybe he's on vacation. Maybe you need to check back later with them. Sometimes we act as if that's God. But you see, God already wants to work in your life. You're not trying to convince him of anything. 
And you know, we have believed another lie. We have believed that if we don't get what we pray for, we must not have enough faith. And then we begin to doubt ourselves. The truth is, God is already at work in your life. He's wanting you to get aligned with Him. He wants communication with you and a communion with you so that you begin to, as you seek His will and as you ask for the things that you need and as you knock on the door, and I got that a little reversed, didn't I? You, you, you ask, you seek, you knock, but, but it's not these three things. It's, it's this relationship to where we say, God, your kingdom come, your will be done in my life as it is in heaven. And so if I have to struggle with some kind of illness, my fault or not my fault, Lord, what I want is your presence, and what I want is for your will to be done. Well, wouldn't it be God's will that I would be healed? I just, I just see in life that there's so many people who struggle with illnesses. I don't know that God just goes around sprinkling fairy dust, folks. We, we've got this idea of God, as, as I shared with you last week, that he's a genie in a bottle, and we, we rub it, and we get our three wishes, or we think that he's like Santa Claus, and we sit on his lap, and we get whatever we want, and, and God is not like that at all. God wants a relationship with his creation, and he wants it more than just what I'm going to get out of it, but he's going to give us so much more. He provides wisdom. He provides understanding. We find courage and hope to face the future, face the day ahead, to face whatever struggle it is that we've got to face. This is what comes from connecting and aligning with God and communing, communing with Him. Practicing the presence of God. It's not a pill, it's not a request. It's a relationship. It's time spent. We talked about it for three weeks, about, about the Holy Scriptures and time spent with it, but now we're talking about just time spent with God. Each of us who have had our sins forgiven, each of us who claim to be walking in the light as the Holy Spirit shines light into our life, you have his anointing. I'm going to say that again. If your sins are forgiven and you are walking in the light as his Holy Spirit is shining light into your life, you have his anointing. Amen? It is yours. It is present with you. God is, is there. And 2 Peter 3.15 says, if that's the case, then we should always be ready to give a reason for the hope within us and to do it with gentleness and respect. You see, we have this opportunity to be in communion and alignment with the Holy Spirit of God. You don't need me or Pastor Luke or somebody else to pray for you. You don't need it. But Pastor, so what's your job? Really, my job is really just to equip you to trust it and to believe in God. That's my job. But, but if you always come to me to pray for you, if you always go to somebody else to pray for you, it's like, it's like we're in... Sixth grade again, sending a note to a friend of the girl or the boy that you're interested in talking to, and you're, you're constantly talking to the other person and not the person. You guys have access to God himself all the time. He's always with you. He'll never abandon you. He'll be with you even to the end of this age. You have an opportunity. You don't need us to pray for you. But what happens when we do pray together? All of our faith begins to increase, and we begin to align ourselves with God, and we begin to, to carry the burden for our loved ones and our friends and our family. We're not doing it to convince God to do something. That's not the type of God we serve. It's not the kind of God that we find in Scripture. God is Savior and healer, and he is powerful, but you're the conduit. You are the conduit. 
God wants to use you. God wants to work in you and through you, for you, for your family, and for others. Look at James chapter 5, verses 13 to 15. This is this idea of coming together. Is there anyone among you in trouble? Let them pray. Is anyone happy? Let them sing songs of praise. Is anyone among you sick? Let them call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with the oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well, and the Lord will raise them up. If they have sinned, they'll be forgiven. So, so James challenges the church to be one together. But this isn't to get God to move, it's to get the church united. And in a few moments, we're going to have an opportunity, if you want. We're going to do it three at a time. If you want to come, you can stand on one of these dots here, and, and you're going to share with me what it is that you want to be anointed for, and then I'm going to anoint you with oil, and we're all going to stand, and we're going to extend our hands out toward them, and they're going to do that out there on Facebook Live and on Zoom. They're going to join with us too. We're going to begin to trust God in a, in a corporate kind of way. Do you know the Scripture says if you forgive someone, they're forgiven? Well, you're not Jesus. We're not Jesus. He's not saying that. He's saying he is with you. And if someone needs to be forgiven and you offer it, they're forgiven. Not because we have the power, but we're the conduit of God's grace. And others can receive that. Others need healing. There's no one person who has the gifts of healing. Well, pastor, I see it on TV. There's those certain evangelists. They have the gifts of healings. Now, it's the Holy Spirit who has the gift of healing. Amen? We are just the conduits. And praise the Lord if someone on TV is able to, to trust God and, and to pray and others are being healed. But, but it's not that person doing the healing. It is God through that person. And you, you have that opportunity to be that conduit of prayer and healing for individuals. We who are ministers, we don't have the corner on the market of God. Each of us, as we practice the presence of God. What do you mean, pastor? What do you mean practice the presence? I mean spend time with God, talking to Him, communing with Him, reading the Scriptures and beginning to align yourself with God's will. What happens if I pray for someone and it's not God's will? It's okay. You can pray. God says, ask anything you wish. And if it's in accordance with Hill, you can have His will. You can have what you ask for. So we don't go to God to get Him to do magic tricks. We don't say in Jesus' name to be like Abacadabra. No, what we do is we go to God and we say, God, you're the creator. You're the healer, your savior. I'm coming to you. I want your kingdom to come. I want your will to be done in my life and in this situation. So if you need, pray. I challenge you to spend time with God, not just boldly approaching him with your list, but boldly approaching him and saying, God, here I am. Search my heart, see my life. And Lord, I, I want these things to happen in my life, but God, I want your kingdom to come. I want your will to be done in my life. So we're going to stand together right now and we're going to read the traditional Lord's Prayer. Remember last week I shared with you that both Matthew and Luke don't have really the traditional prayer that we typically say. But we're going to stay to get, stand together and we're going to read this prayer together. And then if you feel like you want to be anointed with oil, I'm going to ask that you to come forward and we'll begin to come three at a time and stand on those dots and we'll do that. So let's stand together. No? You can go to Matthew chapter 6. It'll be close. If I started it, you guys would be able to join in without a doubt. Our Father, 
in heaven. Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The Lord Jesus taught us to pray this way. And if you have some kind of need, maybe you want to pray in behalf of someone else, why don't you begin to come and three can come quickly and, and line yourself up on these dots and then we're going to pray and as they go back, others can come forward. I'm looking at the Zoom prayers that we have here that have come in. What can the Lord do for you this morning? I want to be anointed on behalf of Ruben, Ruben Alvarado. He's an associate pastor at San Pedro Peninsula Church at Nazarene. And him and his wife have a, a ministry for the young couples and married. And they're still doing it under hospital bed. And he's just informed once they were Mm. We're going to be praying for Pastor Ruben Alvarado there in San Pedro, California, as he is in hospice care with cancer. So let's be praying for them. Lord Jesus, we join with Don's faith as he has come before the congregation, Father, and we extend our hands out towards Don. But Lord, what we're doing is we're really extending our hands out towards you. And so, Father, we are claiming that your presence is right there in the room with Pastor Reuben. His family is sensing your presence right now, Father God. And Lord, we, we know that humanity, the medical profession has said that it's time, it's toward the end, and the hospice community has come in. But Father, we're praying, Lord Jesus, that you would heal, because Lord, we believe you can. But Father, we're asking also that you would reveal yourself in such a way to his family, that they would have a peace that passes all human understanding. Lord Jesus, glorify yourself and Reuben and his family in the life there of San, ba pa San Pedro, Church of the Nazarene. Amen. I Look at the Lord. The restoration of the world at this time of COVID so I can again travel to the four corners and be God's presence to the world. Lord, your child, Scott, has a peculiar job that requires him to travel the world. And Lord, right now, that has been restricted. And Father, he's able to go and do things that governments need. But Father, what he is is your light shining in the darkness as he travels the world. And so, Father, I pray that you would strengthen and encourage Scott in these days. Father, that you would help him see what this time period is going to be for him, Lord, so that when it comes time for him to travel, he will be equipped in such a way to do a new thing through your power and through your spirit. And so, Father, continue to uh, anoint him with your presence. In Jesus' name. Father, we come to you in Jesus' name. And Lord, we understand that Jesus knows what it was like to lose a loved one. And Father, right now, Lynn and her grandchild, the only ones really surviving this horrible accident that took place, Father, they need your presence in a way that is so real, that gives them hope and peace Lord, uh, it's difficult when loved ones are taken so quickly through an accident. Father, be their hope, be their peace, be their strength. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Any others want to come forward, be anointed.
Kevin Sandell has uh, asked if we would pray for him. He's dealing with some issues, and so maybe there's someone that would like to stand in place for Kevin this morning. Scott, what can the Lord do for you? Scott has come praying in behalf of Rodney and his family. Lord Jesus, thank you that uh, we don't have to be right there in Indiana where Rodney's at this morning. Lord God, you're there. We thank you and we trust and we believe you're there. And Father, thank you for the faithfulness of a brother who's in discipleship together with Rodney. Thank you for Scott coming, Father. But right now, in a new and a special, fresh way, pour your spirit out to Rodney and his family as they deal with the pain of the loss of their father. Father, draw that family together as they draw near to you. Give them peace in Jesus' name. Derek is headed off to Eastern Nazarene College again. We send him in the presence of God and knowing that God has a plan for your life to prosper you, to benefit the kingdom through you. And so, Lord Jesus, as we send Derek, we pray for a safe journey. We pray that you would keep him alert on the many hours drive up to Boston. And Father, I pray that you would every day show Derek that it's not tomorrow that ministry begins, but that as soon as he steps on campus, he's going to be the light and love of Jesus Christ to all there. So Father, glorify yourself. Strengthen his mind and his will. Provide work that will pay the bills, Father. Give him your presence in abundance. In Jesus' name, amen. What can the Lord do for you today? I'd like to pray for uh, Ron and for Travis. That God will just uh, meet their needs. Lord Jesus, Gary is coming on behalf of his boys. Ron and Travis. Father, it's, uh, it's the life of the D.C. area where contracts have a period of time, and when those contracts come to an end, the employees are quickly trying to locate other work. And Father, I pray right now that, and I join with Gary's faith, that I know that Ron and Travis are trusting you right now, but Lord, that they would have a peace in the midst of the turmoil that, Father, they would have a trust in you to give them light on their path, that they would know which way to walk. Father, we, we don't know what the right approach is, but, Lord, we know the families will need income. And so meet their need, Father. Glorify yourself in the way that you do it and the peace that will pass all human understanding. Be with their spouses and their children as they worry, as they struggle. Father, may they find this day these days, between now and September 4th when that contract comes to an end, that they would find these days to be the days of most peace that they've ever experienced because of your presence. And then, Father, open the door for the future you have for them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Any others want to come forward? Lord Jesus, Pastor Narcissa brings her son Daniel before you. Father, he has had a horrible break in his leg. And Father, that means uh, a lack of work and, and other stresses and strains. And so, Father, she comes before you presenting her child to you. Even though he's an adult child, she still cares and desires his best. And so, Father, I pray in Jesus' name that you would continue the healing in Daniel's body, but, Lord, that you would continue to draw him nearer to yourself and show him your plan for his life. In Jesus' name. Hmm. 
Lord Ian brings his daughter, Betsy, before you. Father, she works in a, uh, a job that includes some violence at times. And Father, we pray that you would give her safety in those days when she is working with these individuals that, that need your peace. Father, I pray that not only would you would protect her, but Father, as she is continuing her education, that you would give her abilities to focus and to clear her mind and be able to absorb the information that is needed. Father, she has chosen to give herself in humanity's way to care for people, to help people on a journey. Lord Jesus, would you reveal yourself to her because you are the great humanitarian. You are the great giver of love to others. May she have that to abundance and take care of her, Lord Jesus. Let me anoint you for Kevin Sandell. Lord Jesus, we come before you and we say thank you that Kevin has been doing some wonderful things to help us be able to connect with some 20 or 30 other people. And so, Father, Kevin is struggling as he's coming to the end of his educational requirements here. The Army is going to have something for him to do. But, Lord, he, he senses in his own spirit he needs a peace from you. And so, Father, help him realize that, he, that you love him just because he's your child and that he hasn't had to earn and doesn't need to earn anything from you, that you look upon him and you say, my child in whom I'm well pleased. And so, Father, we pray for Kevin today. We pray for his family. We pray for his wife's health and that she would have strength in these days. Lord Jesus, glorify yourself in your holy name. Luke's going to pray for me as I have surgery this week on my shoulder. Lord, we ask that you be with Paul and Ethan as Ethan prepares to have this surgery on his shoulder and his bicep, Lord. Pray that you would be with the surgeon and that there would be no anxiety or fear going into this, Lord. And we lift up um, our church as we pray for Pastor and, and um, we just thank you that we're going to have someone who is willing and able to preach uh, in pastor's stead that he doesn't have to worry about that and, and father we just thank you that this ailment that's been bothering pastor for so long is finally going to be put behind him lord and we thank you for the dedication that he has not only to you but to our church and our body as well <laughs> any others any others let me see Rebecca Borum is wanting to be anointed on behalf of the divine family uh, whose son Jason was born with some really, really almost unrecoverable situations in their life. He may never be walking and talking and all of those things. And so uh, Rebecca is going to be uh, being anointed in behalf of them, and she is online with us now. So let's, let's just extend our arms out there and in prayer. Father... We thank you for the faithfulness of Rebecca Borum coming before you right now. But, Father, we're praying for Pastor Timothy and, and Katie Devine. Lord, uh, they love you. Their children love you. But, Father, this one, Jason, Father, we don't understand why certain young ones are stricken with such horrible illnesses that make it to where they're never really going to interact in ways that we, we understand. But Father, we don't believe you have done this. We don't believe you're trying to teach anything through this. But we believe, Father, that through Jason and the relationship that the divines have with this child, Lord, you're going to reveal yourself in some supernatural way. So Father, we're praying that you could heal that you would bring something of Jason in a way that nobody could imagine. And Father, whatever that is, we're going to praise you. But Lord, hold right now very tight Timothy and Katie 
and their kids. Hold them close. Hold them tight, Lord Jesus. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Do you believe in prayer? We, 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 weren't, we weren't on TV trying to get certain ratings. We didn't bring people forward in wheelchairs and have them walk off. I'm not saying that stuff's not real. I'm just saying, folks, f- what, what real faith in Christ is, is saying, in spite of whatever might not happen, I'm going to trust God. I'm going to believe he's going to be with me. I'm going to believe that God's going to reveal himself in some way in that situation. And so I just, I just want to encourage you this week. I want to challenge you this week. Go boldly to the throne of grace to receive help and mercy in your time of need. Whatever that might be. Might be a relationship issue. And you know what we tend to do? God changed them so that our relationship will be better. <laughs> Instead, we should be going to God and saying, God, how is this relationship going to be any better? How can I be a part of of that solution. God wants to align you with him, and he wants to have communion with you. Father, as we bring this time of the service to a close, Lord, we want to celebrate you. We want to praise you. We want to give you glory and honor. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand and let's sing. And we're going to sing this song, and I'll cover a couple of announcements, and then uh, Doug will be helping us with our benediction. But let's, let's trust that God is at work, and he's about to do something in an amazing way in our lives.
turn it for good. You take the enemy meant for evil. You turn it for good. You turn it for good. You take the enemy meant for evil. You turn it for good. You turn it for good. You take the enemy meant for evil. You turn it for good. You turn it for good. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory for the battle. He is, he is bringing about good in the midst of what the enemy has meant for evil. Well, again, I want to say thank you for all of you who give faithfully to the Lord, this congregation. You have revealed God's grace to, to so many in the leaders of this church as we have continued to meet the needs of, of the church without any hindrance. Thank you for that. Uh, at the end of the service, as you leave, there's a church building right there between the two exit doors. Uh, the top of the church is open. You can drop your gift in there. You can use uh, our Facebook page, Woodbridge Naz, and click on the Learn More button. You could use our, our website at woodbridgenaz.com and click on the Donate button there and give that way. Uh, so many people are giving to the, uh, to, through bill pay and sending checks directly to the church. Um, I just want to say thank you so much for the faithfulness of each and every one of you for what God is doing and how he's taking care of our needs. Um, we have Tuesday night Zoom prayer meeting. Um, so if you're interested on the website, I'm, I'm not, not the website, but the uh, Facebook page, uh, you'll be able to scroll down through there and you'll find the link uh, to the Zoom prayer gathering Tuesdays at 7 o'clock. And we still could use some help around the building if you could you'd like to do some lawn not lawn, but, but weeding and some trimming of bushes and different things around the property. Still some things that you could help around here with. And as Pastor Luke said, uh, we're going to be trying to deliver those packages this week to Vacation Bible School. So if you uh, have not contacted him, children at woodbridgenaz.com children at woodbridgenaz.com and he'll make sure he gets uh, some of those packages out to you and get you the link to the videos that will be d be done. And you know and what? If we, Maybe if we run some out, of you we can always order more. What's that? If we run out and we need more, then we can always just order we more. We can always get more. Um, and maybe you say, Pastor, I'm not sure I want to come out and do any weeding or anything like that. Would you like to make some phone calls to people who are not able to get out? I think they would love to have some people reach out to them. And so you can contact the church office. Uh, you can uh, contact me, A. Birch, at woodbridgenaz.com, and uh, I can get information to you, some people who could be reached out to. So thank you, church, for being the church. It's great to see you guys today. One of our board members, Doug Ferenz, he's responsible for our facilities. Uh, be praying for him. We've got some decisions to make in the days ahead about some things we've been looking at. But Doug, why don't you come? Today's benediction is, comes from Joshua 22, verses 5 and 6. But be very careful to keep the commandment and the law that Moses, the servant of the Lord, gave you, to love the Lord your God, to walk in obedience to him, to keep his commandments, to hold fast to him, and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul. Then Joshua blessed them and sent them away, and they went to their homes. Have a great week. You're dismissed. <laughs>